Okay, so here we are. We're up to part four of my little mini-series on tips and tricks. Uh, so, I think this might wind up being a little bit longer than the other ones. I'm not sure yet. So, uh, cause I got a lot to talk about after I'm finished showing you what I got to show you. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started with this. Uh, like I said, part four of my tips and tricks that way okay <clears throat> so what I'm trying to show you here this is uh, a sheet of my plans for the blue nose now, that doesn't necessarily have to be the blue nose could be any model and I think there were there were six sheets this large in in that sh in them uh, directions in that sheet of plans that gave me and what I'm trying to get at here is there is so much going on in this one sheet of plans here that when it came time to make my sales, I had to try and pick them sales out of all that's going on in this in this sheet. And, and I've said this before, I wish they would have made one more sheet of plans of just the sales so you could get your sales and figure them out. So what I've done here was I I got me a, a copier that will also print and I made copies of this now not the whole sheet but I would fold it up and take a copy of, of this section here so I could get that sale a copy of this section here so I could get that sale and what I did was I made copies of them and then I took that and cut out the pattern for my sales and remember um, now this is an exact copy right here but when I cut out the the pattern I made it a half inch bigger all the way around I explained that because you got to stitch a seam down the this all around it so uh, and I did this for uh, another section that I was building when I had to uh, trim out the keel on one of the first videos I was working on where I had to cut out that keel so I it would accept my planks and I make copies of that and lay that on my model so I can get the right dimensions and, and, and everything. So the point I'm trying to make, little tip I'm trying to make, make copies of your plans so you can cut them up and, and use them against your model. Okay? So that's a, that's a helpful little thing that I did. Now if you, can't, if you don't have a copier, you can always run to the, the store somewhere office supply store or whatever and they'll make you copies. They probably won't be able to make the whole sheet but if they can make it in halves that would be enough for you to be able to get a pattern cut out. Okay? So make copies. Okay, I talked earlier in one of my videos about losing parts. How easy it is to lose parts uh, when you're cutting them off of your um, photo etch or off of your sprue um, you're trying to pick them up and they'll and they'll take off that you'll just lose them so here's a little something I was doing and and this is one of them I would lay down a towel okay and when it came time to cut off my little parts let's say I had a bunch of little parts here I had to cut off my sprue I'd keep it close to that towel and as I was cutting them parts off they would drop onto this towel and this towel will grab them a lot you know it, it won't let them take a bounce and, and take off this towel will grab a hold of them little parts okay now something else I was doing uh, if you got an extra plastic bin a small one or the top of your box off of your model lay that sprue inside the top of that box and cut your parts off in there and that way they'll stay within that box uh, very seldom will you ever find one that will take off out of that box they'll drop down into that box and now you know where you got your little parts at so uh, try that you know when you're cutting uh, parts off your sprue and they're pretty small kind of keep your hand off over it as you're cutting the parts off and they should drop onto this towel and stay right there or into the top of the box, whichever is easier for you. 
I found the towels much easier. You can see them, pick them right up. And uh, like I said, I put mine in my pill bottles. Okay. All right. Now you got a model ship. And it's time to bend some planking. Uh, one of the reasons I chose the blue nose to build for my, I will we'll say my attempt at doing a really fine model uh, was because the blue nose was a fairly, I guess you could say, easy ship to build. It only had two masts, had a lot of booms on it, and the planking was pretty straightforward. Uh, if you notice on a lot of your older tall ships like uh, the Constitution or the Victory or whatever, back in the day they had that real sharp bend up in the bow or the real hard curve you had to make around the rear of the ship. So that's one of the reasons why I chose the Bounty for my first real planking job. Because the planks didn't take hardly any bending at all and what bending you had to do you could just clamp that piece of wood on there and glue it on there and it held its position. But let's say you got you do have to do some bending. There was a couple little spots where I had to bend something. What I do is I go up to the bathroom and I turn on the hot water. And I just keep running this under the say I got this much of this plank I have to bend. I'll just keep running that under the hot water, okay? And as I'm running it under that hot water, and watch your fingers so you don't bend, burn yourself, I will start putting some pressure on that to give it a bend. Try to get it to the shape that I'm wanting. And you've got to go a little bit beyond that because there is some spring back from doing that. But you get that run under hot water, oh, I'd say maybe no more than five or ten minutes. Ten minutes at the max. And then I'll take and wipe it off with a towel, get some of that moisture off of there, and then attach it to my ship and clamp it. But as, like I said, as I am running that under the hot water, start giving it the shape you want. Start bending it. Pull it out, bend it, put it back under there. And, you know, now I've seen some guys take a, a glass of hot water and just set them down in that hot water and do it that way. That's fine and dandy. Whatever you think is, is the easiest for you but for me the easiest was just take it to the bathroom and run it under that hot water and bend that plank now there was one spot on that uh, blue nose on the on the railing where I practically had to make a 90 degree bend okay now I didn't just come right here to the end and make a 90 I, I made that 90 back here so I could have some uh, enough wood to, to pull on but being such a small piece of wood and such a sharp bend I had to get and I believe I used a drill bit I don't remember but bend it around something pull it away from that hot water and start working it start working that piece of wood and you're gonna have to be real careful because that wood is gonna want to splinter as you're doing that so be real careful put a lot of pressure on the outside of it as you are bending it and just take your time slowly slowly get that bend in it and that's how I got that 90 degree bend that's on my rails so uh, plenty of hot water and start working it as you're running it under that hot water and, and you will wind up with a good bend alright now you just bent some uh, wood now you gotta bend some plastic uh, if anybody had watched me build this model, uh, this was a, a fairly little cheapy model. Uh, this one whole side of the, of the boat here was warped. The plastic was <laughs> going like that down the side of the boat. So what I done is I took my wife's hair dryer and I put it on the hot setting. And I don't know about your wife's hair dryer, but that thing will get hot. And I just kept running that hair dryer back and forth across that section of plastic there that was all warped. Just kept running it back and forth to heat that plastic up. And then I put some clamps on it to get it into the position I want it. And once it cools down, you pretty much took that warp 
out of that piece of plastic. So uh, once again, it, it comes down to heat, you know, hot water for the, the wood and heat for the plastic. And uh, you can pretty much, you know, bend anything with a little bit of heat. Uh, all kinds of styrene rod or, or whatever. You put enough heat to it and you can get it to bend. But uh, that's a quick and easy way that if you got, uh, you're putting together a ship, a plastic ship in the two halls and they're not lining up right in the center or something, put some heat to it and then clamp it in place and it should... Uh, hold uh, the uh, position that you want. Alright, we'll just keep this model out here for a minute. Uh, let's say you're gluing a couple things together and you got squeeze out of your glue. Clean it up. Clean it up as soon as possible because if you don't and it's plastic glue then you're sitting there with your knife trying to chip off that that dried up glue. So as soon as you uh, glue something together, and if you see you had too much glue and it's squeezing out, clean it up. Especially on your wooden ship, when you're doing your planking. If you got, uh, I took my white glue and was running down, or that tight bond, and was running a bead down here, so I could put it up against the other plank, well there'd be squeeze out, you'd see that glue coming out. I took a wet, damp rag and wiped it up right away. Clean up your glue as you go along and will save you a lot of time than having to go back and try and scrape it off or sand it off. So, uh, yeah, that's, a, that's my important little tip there. Clean up your mess as you're going along. Okay, now you picked your model you want to build. Uh, this here is the Arizona, in case anybody doesn't know. <clears throat> and everybody wants to build the Arizona when they're doing it to the way it looked on December 7th 1941 well this particular kit that I got here you ha you had to make a lot of changes to it to bring it up to there I can't remember I, I, you'd have to go back and watch my video but what they gave you in the kit was not December 7th 1941 it was somewhere in the 30s 35 or something like that uh, and a lot of that had to do, I think, with the way this one rear mast here was on the front instead of the back. Uh, the clock, the big uh, round clock that they had on here, I forget what, they, what that was for. I think it was judging how long, I don't, anyway, that's neither here nor there. I don't believe that that was on there the day that she was uh, sunk. And the point I'm trying to make here... Uh, is do your research and especially on this Arizona there is so much information out there and so many good pictures you can pick up on do your research if you want to make this December 7th 1941 there's a lot on here you got to change what they gave you in the kit for the little small planes was wrong uh, these masts up here were wrong uh, just a lot of little things that if you don't do your research and you build it straight out of the box that is not December 7th 1941 I had the same problem with that submarine when I was building that submarine uh, so the important thing I'm trying to tell you here is do your research uh, if, if you want to build the best looking model for the period you really have to check it out because these modelers, these model companies, they take a lot of stuff for liberty. They just, you know, they're looking at pictures and saying, okay, let's build that like that. Well, it's not to the time period that you want. So you have to use your imagination and, and look at your research and bring it up to the date that you want. All right. So that's the important little tip on this one is do your research. All right. So there's my Arizona. Okay. Here's my blue nose. Uh, and here we just got done talking about research. When I got this kit, they gave me the Canadian flag.
Okay, that's what came in the kit when I got that maple leaf. All right. And if you was to do your research, let me focus in on this. Let me move the camera around a little bit. If you was to do your research, the maple leaf flag that they gave me in the kit was the improper flag for this time period of this blue nose. This is the blue nose, not the blue nose 2 or anything. This is the blue nose. And the correct flag for that time period looks like that. So I had to order that. So that's what I'm getting at when I say do your research. All right. There is a couple really good websites out there on the blue nose. You can get some real nice pictures uh, of different sections of the ship when she was in real bad disrepair. Uh, they came on, they came on board, took a bunch of pictures of her. But uh, once again, what I'm getting at is do your research. Okay, we're going to talk about planking of the deck. All right. Now, if you watch me build this. When it came time to plank the deck, I noticed that there's a lot of guys will take a plank and cut it to a certain length and then lay it down and then cut another one to a certain length, lay it down, and so on and so forth. Well, the way I did mine, and, I, and it worked out great, and I'll, I'll get a close-up for you, is I plank, there's a step right here on the deck. Right here in the middle of the ship, there's a step. And from that step back is one solid plank. From that step forward is one solid plank, you know, on down, if you understand what I'm trying to say. Uh, so what I done was I went ahead and planked it like that. Okay. Now it looked like when you looked at it, well, hey, there's no, you know, you you're boards really wouldn't be that long. They're, they're short boards. So what I done was, once I got it done being planked, I came along with my knife, okay? And I followed a set of uh, directions. There's a website I went to where they show you how to do different deck planking spacing, okay? And I followed a, an odd number. I think it was you do boards two and four, and then you do three and five. I think that's how it went. Okay. But there, there's a website out there. You, you just have to do your research and look around that shows you how to plank a deck. Okay. The proper spacing. And, and so you don't have a bunch of, of lines right next to each other running all down in one row. All right. So let me uh, zoom in on that. And like I said, all I did was take my knife, figure out which board it was and, and the distance of it, and put a little relief line in that board. And it looks just like, uh, just like I planked it, you know, that way, like I cut each and every board. So let me see if I can zoom in on this a little bit. I don't know how good that's showing up. Let me let me try tilting it up a little bit. Got to turn my lens around so I can see what you're seeing. If you can see them little lines, I think it's showing up. See them right there, right through there. Now, when I did my planking. I took each and in every individual plank, let me back out. When I did my planking, I took each plank and took a pencil and laid that plank on its edge and took that pencil and ran it across the edge of that board, okay? Now, the first time I ever did it was back on the bounty. I used a magic marker. Well, when I went to stain it, the magic marker bled into my stain. Came out with a nice effect, but I didn't want that to happen. So this time I used a pencil. You take a, a dark colored pencil and just run it down there, okay? So then when you put them boards on that deck, it looks like the caulking that they, uh, 
they do in between each and every plank. Let me zoom in again. Okay, if you look at that real good, you will see that it looks like caulking that they do in between each and every one of them planks. That's what that pencil will do for you. Now, when it came time to cut these little relief lines, I, uh, I just, when I stained my model, that stain made that wood a little darker there so it looks like it's in each and every individual board. Okay, you follow me? So you, once again, you gotta go back and watch my videos on how I did that stuff. But a little tip I'm trying to give you is put that pencil on the edge of your planks, run the plank the whole way, and then put little relief lines in it with, the, with your thing. All right, since I got the blue nose down here, one last thing I wanna show you. Uh, this cabin here and this wheelhouse <clears throat> and this companion way up in the front up here um, which you ain't seeing that but anyway what I want to get at is when I first decided to start building this stuff I took uh, some cardboard I had some real thin cardboard you can use a cereal box or something and I built this thing out of cardboard so I could see what it would look like on my deck, how big it was and if I was doing it right and everything. Then once I had that done, now I got my pattern to build this out of wood. Uh, this, you know, you can either take it apart, you can go back and watch how I did that. You can take, it, take your pattern apart and then lay your boards down on it and glue it to that piece of cardboard and that will give that wood extra strength however you want to do it but the point I'm trying to make is make a pattern of stuff like this things you got to do so you can see what it looks like and then you can work off of that when it comes time to building it out of wood okay all right we're gonna finish this up uh, we're gonna finish it up by me showing you the blue nose and how many of these little tips and tricks that I employed on this one particular model. Uh, we'll start up here in front on the bow sprint. There is so much going on up here, coming together all in the one spot. And those little brass rings that I made from that tubing, I think there's four of them up here. I'm not, I can't remember. And I had to drill into each one of them to put an eye hook in there so I could tie off all this rigging that had to come up to there. Uh, so what I'm getting at is them little brass rings, that, that was much simpler than trying to make them the way they wanted you to. Uh, these little round rings, I bought them over at the hobby store because they surely don't give you enough of them in the model. The chain. Chain came from the hobby store. Looks just like chain uh, for a ship. Let me see if I can zoom in on some of this as I'm talking about it. Okay. And I don't think it's showing up, but there's some more of that chain. I've got it coming through that hole, the Halsey pipe around my windlash and laying on the deck. I also have some more chain back in here on this little gear system uh, it's a smaller piece to make it look like chain running at that, that uh, thing uh, going back you can see right back in here where I used that jig to make all that rope hanging off them belay pins and then I used the other jig to get the spacing on my dead eyes just right okay See, it's going back. Uh, I bought on the internet, I think they call them airports. I'm pretty sure that's what they call them, airports. A little porthole that I bought on the internet that fit. Does not come with the kit. Going back, I've got dead eyes. You see, you probably see the ones in the back better. I don't know. 
But I got dead eyes all over this ship, okay? And, uh, is that right, dead eyes? Anyway, I'm having an Alzheimer's moment. Um, I've got them all over the ship. Now, the ones they gave me with the kit were brass. I, I didn't want them all brass. So I bought this liquid, and I don't have it sitting out. Once again, it's probably packed away. Let me see if I got it over here. Nope. Anyway, uh, I bought this liquid, and it will take brass, and it will turn it black. All right. I used that on quite a few little pieces on this on this model, so I could get uh, black eye hooks and stuff like that. But what I'm getting at is, you know, I bought those eye hooks, a lot of them, from over at the hobby store. Going back. Oh, here's something I didn't talk about, a little trick. Let me get zoomed in on one here somewhere. Okay, this block and tackle. Okay. A lot of this block and tackle you have to have a hook on the end of it so it can hook on to a, a, an eye hook that's up here on one of these rings. What I did was I went to the hobby store and bought me some real thin wire and wrapped it around, twisted it, and then put a hook on the end of it. So uh, go and get yourself some real thin wire for them block and tackle. Here, let me show you. You can see one better right over here right there those how they got a little hook on it that's a piece of wire wrapped around there and then twist it with a pair of needle nose and then leave it a little long and put a hook on the end of it and while we're over here you can see once again all those rings that I made that fit over that mask now I painted mine I painted mine silver but uh, you can leave them brass, you can darken them up, paint them black, whatever you want to do. But uh, I don't know, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, I think, there. And one, two, three, four, five, six over here. Seven. I mean, they're everywhere. All over the booms, they're down on the booms. Let me get down to that. Right there's one of my booms. Got to think of which one I'm looking at here. Right there. They're on the tip of that boom there. So, uh, yeah, that, that was a halfway decent little idea. of uh, See the bunch more of them there. And then some on the back. Let me uh, zoom on on it. You see my door in the background. She's coming. There's something here, a little tip. I had to make these little sheaves right here. All right. And if you go back and watch again, I cut that boom out. I handmade my own sheaves. Now you can get on the internet and order them. They're out there. You can buy them. But I just made my own and sat down in there because I used my imagination. All right, so let's zoom out here. Sounds like it's starting to rain outside, another gloomy day. All right, so there's my blue nose. And there's those little balls up on top I talked about earlier. Um, I had to make them little balls. Came from that assortment of beads that I bought. Okay. If you can see from the background, I'm still working on my basement. That's all going to get drywalled back there when I get the time. All right, so there's my blue nose. Uh, and uh, once again, another little thing is that white stripe. That is that pinstripe that I bought. That's what that is right there. You might hold it up a little bit for you. Okay, see it? 
All right. All right, so let's get the camera turned around and uh, we'll finish this up. All right, so uh, I think that brings us to the end of my little mini series here on tips and tricks. I didn't know this was going to turn out to be a four part video. Uh, there, there's still a lot of things that I, I haven't shown you or I, I forgot about and, and just didn't do it. Uh, I am getting already some comments from guys on how they do something or what they use to do something. So um, I, think, I think the best thing I can tell you to sum this up is we can bring it down to three things. Do your research, shop around, and use your imagination. Uh, research. When I get ready to build a model, before I even start on it, I am searching all over the internet for everything I can find on that particular model. The history of the model, uh, whatever type of ship it might be that you're building. Uh, and then I will download a ton of pictures. The more pictures, the better, because you use that as a reference to what you're trying to do and what you're trying to make your model look like. Uh, shop around like I've said before just don't limit yourself to what comes in that box uh, shop around your hobby store shop around your craft store uh, the beauty supply house uh, the internet there, there are so many things out there you can get off the internet that uh, will give that model just a little extra bit to make it look better so shop around and then use your imagination. There were, there were so many times when I was building the blue nose or something and I thought, man, how can I do this to make this easier on myself? You know? Uh, so so I, I used my imagination to think about, well, what if I do this? You know? So those are the three important things that I got to say uh, it, to sum it all up. Research, shop around, and imagination. And if you put them all together, you will come up with a good model and take your time you know this is no race you, you don't have to be in a hurry to do this like I've said it took me eight months to build that blue nose so just take your time and you will wind up with a halfway decent looking model okay uh, and, and once again this is just the tip of the iceberg uh, if you're b building uh, cars, model cars, or model planes. There's a whole slew of tips and tricks on them, you know. Uh, th this is just a few of the things in the past couple years, I think I've been doing this now for about three years, that I have picked up and thought I would share with you guys. Now a lot of you probably already said, hey, you ain't showed me nothing. There's a lot of guys out there from what I've been getting comments from that I have inspired them to go buy a model now and try it out. They've been wanting to do this for a long time <clears throat> and maybe this will help them, okay? Uh, like I said, I've gotten comments from guys, well, you didn't do that right. This is the way you should have done it. This is, well, that's fine. If that's the way you want to build your model, go ahead. You know, I'm not stopping you. But, uh, you know, just take your time figure it out and it will come to you okay with all that being said uh, I got one more thing I want to talk about uh, making videos all right I started this out my son challenged me to put together that first model and he says well why don't you go ahead and post it on YouTube and I thought well okay and that's how I got started you know, as a, as a challenge from my son. And, and look at what it's turned out to be. And I've had a lot of guys comment to me uh, in, the, in just a few years that I've been up. I wouldn't say I'm real successful, but I'm pushing 2,000 subscribers. I'm pushing close to 500,000 hits. I don't think that makes me popular or uh, special or anything. But... I've watched guys that have been on YouTube for years and they're nowhere near what, what I've done in the past three. So what that comes down to is, is making your videos. First thing I can tell you is 
you got to get a good camera. Get a halfway decent camera. Don't use your cell phone. I've seen a lot of guys film their videos with their cell phone and it winds up being a little square box on YouTube. Get a camera, halfway decent camera. I showed you in one of my update videos, I paid about $200 for the Sony camera. Um, this was my old one right here. Okay, that was my old one. My new one looks just like this, only it's in HD. Alright, so the first thing you got to do is get yourself a decent camera to shoot some videos with. Second thing is you need a tripod. Don't, don't try and film your videos holding that camera. There's one guy that still shoots videos, and I watch him every week, and he uses his camera in his hand. And then he's trying to do something with the other hand, and trying to put something together to show you what it looks like with one hand, and it just, that, that camera's all over the place. Get a tripod. Find a good position for it and set it up. Third thing is lighting. You, I can't, I can't tell you how bad you need good lighting. Right now I've got two overhead fluorescent lights on. I've got a spotlight over the top of my, my work area. I've got another light over here on. I've got another light over by the steps that is on. And I still don't have enough good lighting. I've got to break down and get me some of them uh, like they use in uh, photo labs, you know, where they got, you know, when they're doing their shoots, they got them big curtains. You know, you know what I'm talking about, them big lights underneath an umbrella or whatever. But you need good lighting, you know. I got this light over here on because I'm trying to keep the shadow off of this one side of my face. And when you're shooting a video, be consistent about it. Um, and what I mean by that is if you're going to put up videos, try and do it once a week, the same day every week. That's what I do. I choose Sunday. Now, with this little mini-series, it's been different. I've been putting them up every couple days. And because I'm really not building a model, i got so many other things going on, I'm not putting the video up once a week. It's been about once a month now until I can get started. And I will back on that Dora Railgun. It will probably be a winter build. But uh, be consistent about it. If you're going to put up a video and you want followers and you pick a particular day and you, you show up on the YouTube that day every week, guys will begin to watch you and, and, and wait for you to post a video. Uh, me, personally, when I'm building a model, I build one model at a time. Uh, I was watching last night a fellow over in Australia he is building the Arizona. I think he's building a 200 scale model. And I thought, boy, this looks interesting. So I started watching him. Well, in the past six or seven months, he's only put up three videos. He has got four or five models going on at a time. I personally, I, I don't care about your airplanes. I don't care about your armor. I want to see this Arizona. You know, I, you got me hooked on this. Now let's see it. But it's four or five months between, you know, the next video. And, and I lost interest in him. You know, I quit watching. So, uh, you know, for me, it's one model at a time. I know there's a lot of guys out there do two or three at a time. And it, and it breaks up the boredom, you know, gets you away from that for a while and get on something else. Me, I, that would drive me nuts. I, you know, you'd have, you lose your train of thought where you're at in that model, particular model. And then when you come back a couple months later, you think, oh, what was it I was gonna do? So for me, when I show you guys what I'm doing, and I think that's what's made me so popular, is I show the complete build from start to finish, no interruptions. And I think that's why I've been so lucky to have so many viewers. All right. So I think with all that being said, uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, and let me tell you something else. These first two videos <clears throat> in this series, I went to upload them to YouTube. Uh, the first video took almost nine hours to upload. The second video, I thought, well, maybe there was something wrong. Maybe it was the wrong time of day to upload or something. The second video took 
eight hours to upload. Now, I thought there's something going on here, something I'm doing wrong. So I got on YouTube and I started doing a little research on how to speed up my upload time. And there, every, just about every place I went, they talked about this program called Handbrake, H-A-N-D-B-R-E-A-K, I think it's spelled. It's a free download. And what it does is it compresses your file, compresses your video to make it a faster upload. And when I uploaded uh, part three yesterday, or the day before, whatever the time it would be, uh, I cut my time from over eight hours down to just two hours. Still takes a while, but that's a lot faster than eight hours. So, uh, yeah, if you're going to make your own videos, you know, I try to keep my videos between 30 and 35 minutes. I find if I go any longer than that, I think I bore people and it, it makes it too long of a video to watch, to keep your, to hold your interest. Um, there's a lot of guys out there I watch. I wait for them to come up every week and they got a video that is six to 10 minutes long. And I'm thinking, that, I want to see more. That's not enough. Give me more. Then I got to wait another week to see some more. So I think if you hold your videos to around 30 minutes or whatever, I think you'll be all right. Uh, and, and make a video. Talk in it. Uh, I've seen a lot of videos where guys will just show picture after picture after picture. I don't want to see that. Tell me what you're doing. Show me how you're doing it. If you really want to learn how to make a good video, there was two guys I started watching from the very beginning and they have inspired me on how to, to shoot a halfway decent video. Right now, I got, a, I got a bad background, you know. I got this concrete wall behind me. Uh, I, I really need, once I get this basement finished, I'll have a better setup. But the two guys I watch who do very nice videos and you can learn from is Genesis Models. He's from over in England, Bobby Walters and Flory models. Now they have got the setup. They've got three or four cameras going at one time. They got the perfect lighting. They got the perfect studio. You know, those are the kind of guys I learned from to when it came to doing my videos. I learned you have to have the good lighting. You need a tripod. Multiple camera shots would be nice. And explain what you're doing, you know. All right, so I think I, I, I've i talked enough and I showed you enough. Uh, like I said, it was just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, there's a lot of things that I've, I'm still learning, uh, a lot of tips and tricks I'm still picking up from other people. But uh, I hope this is enough to get you started and help you out, make it a little bit easier and not so frustrating. So with that being said, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. If you hung in there through all four parts, thanks a lot. Leave your comments, good or bad. I will read them. Uh, if you're a troll and you want to put up some nasty stuff, put it up. I don't care. You know, I'll, I'll sometimes leave stuff up like that for a day or two and then I kick it out. You know, I've got the power. It's my channel. Let me do what I want on my own channel. I just got into it with a guy when I was building my submarine and... I made a remark on there and he came back, here it is, four or five months later and, and left a remark about the remark. I'm, hey, it's my channel. If I want to say something, I'll say it. I don't expect everybody to agree with it, but, you know, go get your own channel. All right? All right. I think that's enough. I pretty much touched on about everything I can think of. So uh, go out there. Get yourself a model and get building and post it. I want to see it, you know. Uh, I, want to, I want to see what you've done. Everybody wants to see it, you know. It's what makes this hobby interesting. You can get different views and, and things of a model being built and pick up on it. Well, I like this, so I'll incorporate this in my model. Okay, I'm just babbling on now. All right, so thanks again for watching, everybody. Hang in there. And uh, I don't know, I'll be back in about another month. I, uh, 
I got to get started here sooner or later, but I'm still, you know, messing around out in the yard, messing around upstairs, trying to get this basement going. So, I, you know, just bear with me. I'll be there. Bye.